Now we are going to talk about the use of waiting line theory for capacity planning. Waiting lines happen whenever demand and capacity are not perfectly matched. Let us say we have a service provider. Customers enter, are served, and leave. Let us say customers arrive at a rate of 30 per hour and we can serve them at the same rate of 30 per hour. That is, our demand is 30 customers per hour and our capacity is also 30 customers per hour. The capacity utilization of our system is 100%. Such a system seems, at first glance, to be well balanced. We have adequate capacity to meet the demand, but no more than is necessary, so there is no wastage. Our system is working at 100% efficiency. Such a system, however, is based on some assumptions. Suppose we are serving 30 customers per hour at a fast food counter, spending two minutes per customer. Customer A arrives and is served for exactly two minutes. Just as customer A leaves, customer B arrives and is also served for exactly two minutes. Likewise, just as customer B leaves, customer C arrives and is also served for exactly two minutes, and so on. One place where such a system might work is in a manufacturing line where materials arrive exactly two minutes apart, say on a conveyor belt, and receive exactly two minutes of processing each. For a fast food counter, however, such a system seems totally devoid of realism. Let us see what would happen if we utilize such a system for a fast food counter. Although customers arrive at a rate of 30 per hour on average, there is a variability in the arrival pattern. Likewise, although customers are served at a rate of 30 per hour, or one every two minutes, there is a variability in the service pattern. Given this variability in the arrival and service patterns, we can estimate that a waiting line will form as follows. The average number of customers waiting in the line will be infinity. Once they reach the counter, customers will spend an average of two minutes getting service. However, to reach the counter, they will wait for an eternity. Now, how did we come up with these estimates? There are some simple mathematical models that can mimic the behavior of real-life waiting lines. Applying these models, if we simply know the demand and capacity, we can calculate the various characteristics of the waiting line system. One such model is the single server model, which applies to the system we are analyzing. The customer arrival rate is denoted by lambda, and the service rate is denoted by mu. Using this information, we can calculate several characteristics of the waiting line system, such as the utilization, the probability that there are n customers in the system, the average number of customers in the system, L, which includes the person at the counter, plus the number of customers waiting in the line, or L subscript Q, the average time spent in the system, W, which includes the time spent at the counter, plus the time waiting in the line, or W subscript Q. In our example, lambda equals 30, and mu also equals 30. Therefore, utilization equals 100%. To calculate the average number of customers waiting, or LQ, we first use the formula for L, which works out to infinity, Subtracting the person being served at the counter gives us LQ, which is also infinity. Note here that L stands for the number of customers in the system, and the system includes the person being served as well as those waiting in the line. Now, since we can serve 30 customers per hour, each customer is served, on average, for two minutes. But how long will it take to get to the counter to get that two minutes of service? The average time spent in the waiting system, W, is infinity, as the average time spent in the waiting line, WQ. From a practical standpoint, such an infinite waiting line is not going to happen. Imagine you drive to a fast food restaurant and see the line extending outside the door and into the parking lot. You will likely keep driving until you find another restaurant. For practical reasons, though the line will not reach infinity, even a line extending into the parking lot will be enough to turn customers away and keep them away for good. Let us say we want to improve the waiting time. We provide our employees with better training and additional background help so that they can now serve 35 customers per hour.
we can then recalculate our waiting line characteristics based on lambda equals 30 and mu equals 35. Our utilization is now down to 85.7%. That means 14.3% of the time, or 8.57 minutes out of every hour, our employees are idle with no customer to serve. At other times, there are more customers that we can handle, so the waiting line builds. On average, we can expect six customers in the restaurant with 5.14 customers waiting in line. Each customer spends an average of 1.71 minutes at the counter plus 10.29 minutes in line, which comes to an average of 12 minutes in the restaurant, which we call as our waiting line system. Now, from the perspective of a customer looking for fast food, a waiting time of over 10 minutes on average does not sound very enticing. Consider that on 50% of the visits to the restaurant, the customer will wait in excess of 10 minutes and sometimes much more than 10 minutes. Let us say we want to improve the waiting time further. We provide our employees with further training and also provide a runner behind the counter, which allows our employees to now serve 40 customers per hour. We can then recalculate our waiting line characteristics based on lambda equals 30 and mu equals 40. Our utilization is now down to 75%. On average, we can expect three customers in the restaurant with 2.25 customers waiting in line. Each customer spends an average of 1.5 minutes at the counter, plus 4.5 minutes in line, which comes to an average of six minutes in the restaurant. Now these numbers seem much more reasonable for a fast food restaurant. However, to achieve this level of customer service, we had to reduce our capacity utilization to 75%. Consider what that means. 25% of the time, or 15 minutes out of every hour, our employees and resources are idle. Suppose we pay our employees $10 per hour. Every hour, we are throwing away $2.50 for each employee. The reason we would even consider wasting our capacity in this fashion is that if we did not, we would end up making our customers wait inordinately. We have the choice between making the customers wait for our employee or waiting line or making our employee wait for the customers or idle time. Consider that the cost of an irritated customer could include a lost sale or worse, a customer lost to the competition for good, bad word of mouth, lost future customers, etc. It is estimated that the marketing dollars spent to entice a customer into a typical restaurant or store are often not recouped until the customer makes several visits. Consequently, a repeat customer is very valuable and a lost customer is very expensive. Therefore, the cost of making customers wait is often much more than the $2.50 per hour cost of making our employees wait. In addition, in many situations, we may be able to structure the employee's job such that the 25% idle time is not completely lost. Consider, for example, a store employee who can reshelve items when there are no customers at the counter. This is a good example of flexible capacity. On the other hand, if the job is structured more rigidly, or the employee is not skilled at performing other duties, or is not able to move easily from his or her workstation, etc., then the 25% idle time cannot be recaptured productively. A good rule of thumb to use for service processes, especially front office positions, such as in a restaurant or retail store, is to have an average utilization of 70%. Even though 30% of the capacity will be idle, the payoff is in smaller customer waiting times and greater customer service levels. Also, oftentimes a lot of the idle time can be recaptured by a clever use of capacity flexibility. The 70% rule of thumb can be applied in a wide range of situations, although suitable adjustments may be required according to the situation. Consider, for example, a doctor's office. 
There are many times that I've been to my doctor and seen him for only three to five minutes. For that three to five minutes service, I had to wait and wait and wait. Now, when I go to my favorite fast food restaurant to get three to five minutes of service, I spend no more than five to seven minutes in line. Supposing I expect the same level of waiting at my doctor's office, my doctor would have to plan for a 70% utilization. That is, the doctor would be idle 30% of the time, or 18 minutes out of every hour, or 2 hours and 24 minutes out of every 8-hour day. Imagine what that would do to my cost of health care. On the other hand, supposing you were arranging a doctor to attend on the President of the USA. Would you make the president wait for five to seven minutes? Or would you make the doctor wait for the president, even if that meant keeping the doctor idle for hours?